In this video, I'm going to be talking about elastic collisions. I'm going to be talking about what it is and what do you do to solve an elastic collision type calculation. So first of all, um, one of the biggest concepts related to the collisions is that the momentum is conserved, which means the total momentum of the system before and after the collision is going to be constant, as long as you're not considering the external forces. And then also the kinetic energy is conserved. Um, same thing, the kinetic energy of the entire system is going to remain constant throughout. And then in elastic collisions, you're talking about two or more objects that typically collide with each other and then separate without any deformation. All right, so in our box over here, we have our question that talks about the collision occurring. It says, in an effort to get a soccer ball, Carrie, who is 55 kilograms, and Nora, who is 45 kilograms, are running towards each other. Carrie's running at three meters per second, while Nora is moving at two meters per second. Nora gets bumped backwards at a speed of one meter per second. What is Carrie's final velocity after the collision? And the way we're going to solve this is we're just going to use the momentum formula, is that momentum equals mass times velocity, and we're going to use it multiple times for each of the people involved before and after the collision. So your very first step is always to draw a picture. All right, now I've completed the most important part of the problem, which is analyzing the situation, drawing my before and after pictures, placing values and negatives. So your first step is to make sure you label a section that's before the collision and after the collision. And I would lay it out exactly as you see it on the screen before the collision on the left and then after the collision directly to the right of it. And then I'm just gonna draw some quick sketches of my pictures. And I drew my little stick finger figures. I have a C for Carrie and an N for Nora, so I remember which person is which. I drew in some arrows showing which direction they're going. So it says they're running towards each other. So one person's going to the right and which one person's going to the left. And I put the masses right underneath them just to make sure I keep track of all my numbers. And because Nora's velocity is going back to the left, I made sure that had a negative next to it. Now, after the collision, um, we're looking for how fast Carrie's going after the collision has occurred. Now, this is the part where the picture really is important because it says Nora gets bumped backwards. A lot of times people associate the word backwards with a negative sign. They think that it's supposed to be a negative velocity, but Nora was initially going in the negative direction. So when she gets bumped backwards, she actually gets bumped backwards into the positive direction. So that's one of the main um, factors in drawing your picture is to notice where those negatives actually belong. All right, now that we have everything laid out, really all we need to do is find the momentum of each of the people involved before and after the collision. And then we're gonna have our one unknown variable right here, the velocity of carrying, and then we can go ahead and do some algebra to solve that.
I went ahead and plugged in all my numbers and like I mentioned earlier it's important to align your pictures from left to right so then that way you can literally take your numbers and pull them straight down into your formula. So with momentum calculations a lot of it can be just a lot of organization and being able to recognize which direction things are going and then put negatives in the appropriate spots. So once I have my picture all labeled out uh, that's the majority of the physics part that I've already had to think through. Now really it's just pulling down my numbers and then multiplying stuff out to simplify it some. And then really from there, um, all I had to do is I had this whole entire side condensed down to 75 as the total uh, momentum for the entire collision. And then afterwards I had 55 times VF because we don't know the velocity of Carrie after she got bumped. Um, we do know the momentum of Nora, which was 45, went ahead and subtracted 45 from both sides and then finished off by dividing by 55. So it turns out that um, carry speed is 0.55 uh, meters per second. Okay, so which means that she was initially running at three towards the right and she continued to run that same direction. So that means that she had enough momentum where she could have continued in her same direction, um, but her momentum did definitely decrease because she transferred some of that onto Nora, causing her to lose all of her negative momentum and even flip her down um, into the positive direction and cause her to have that momentum of that 45 times one in the positive direction. Now to recap, after you read the question very carefully, you wanna make sure you draw a good picture with a few things involved. You wanna make sure you have a before the collision section and an after the collision section so you don't get your numbers mixed up. And then you draw your pictures with the appropriate masses right next to them and draw your arrows next to your velocities based on the description of the problem and anything going the opposite direction. Um, in my case here, that would be anything going to the left. I would make sure I place a negative sign next to it. And then from there, all you have to do is take your numbers, drop them down, use M times V multiple times to go get the momentum of the person before and after the collision and then finish off with a little bit of algebra to get your unknown value. Now, if you were approaching this from more of an energy point of view, you would basically do the same exact thing. You want to make sure you draw a picture, get your numbers organized. The only difference would be instead of using mass times velocity for your momentum, you would use a kinetic energy formula and put one half mv squared in each of these spots and then fill in your known variables and then solve for your unknown variable um, with a couple algebraic steps. I hope that was helpful in helping you understand and calculate an elastic collision type problem. Thank you for watching and listening.